Rinse potatoes to remove excess starch. Most french fry recipes tell you to do this, but it doesn't really make sense because potatoes are full of starch and starch is what makes fried food crispy. That's why french fries are even a thing. Why would you want to remove starch? Chefs offer a variety of explanations, many of which seem a bit simplistic, and it's a bit odd when I see recipes for Belgian frites, the original french fries, that don't call for rinsing. Some of them even say you're not supposed to rinse the potatoes, saying that you want that surface starch. So I wanted to do some research and tests in my own kitchen to try to figure out why people have such conflicting opinions on this. Rinsing or soaking potatoes is supposed to do one or more of the following things. Make them crispier and less greasy on the outside, make them lighter or creamier inside, make them more lightly colored and less dark brown. Many chefs, including Julia Child, say that like rice, you rinse to make the fries less sticky. When they go into the fat, that they won't stick together. That does make sense, especially if you're working with crowded baskets of fries, you wouldn't want those to stick. But at home with smaller batches, it's easier to keep the fries separate, not a big deal. But let's see what actually happens. If I make fries, half of them rinsed and the other half unrinsed, double fried in peanut oil, what difference does it make? Most visible difference here is the rinsed ones are a bit lighter in color. Not by much, but uh, pretty consistently, the unrinsed ones are darker. Rinsed ones are crispy and pleasant. And they look about the same on the inside. If I just take two of each, close my eyes and randomize these so that I don't know which is which, can I tell a difference? They taste pretty much the same. I wouldn't say there's any obvious difference in the texture. So I can say from my research that I know the difference in color comes from sugars in the potato. Sugar browns faster than starch, and I see a lot of recipes these days saying that rinsing is just about removing sugar, with no mention of starch. And this question of sugar is pretty serious for factories making mass-produced french fries. There are glucose strips that they can use to test and figure out how much sugar is in their potatoes. If they have high sugar, they might use products like these edible bleaching agents that thoroughly remove sugars or even block enzymatic activity, all in the name of keeping fries lighter in color. I had no idea this was such serious business. But as far as the impact of removing starch, I'm not sure what to think. It definitely holds true that fries will stick more if they're not rinsed. Because on a microscopic level, starch is normally bound up inside of cells, but when you cut the potato, it releases starch to the surface. You can rinse and remove this starch, because if you don't, the starch swells with water as the potato cooks, and it makes a gel, like a paper mache flour paste. If you rinse the starch, the sticky gel won't form. But while many claim that rinsing improves crispness or creaminess, even offering scientific sounding explanations like the remaining starch creates a layer that fries up more crispy, it didn't seem to make a difference in my test. Others have done similar tests and found the same thing, that rinsing was more about color than texture. There's also this bizarre recipe from modernist cuisine that calls for, get this, an ultrasonic bath to create cavities that expose more interior starch, plus soaking the fries in a slurry to infuse even more starch. If starch on the surface of fries was such a bad thing, then this recipe shouldn't exist, but it does. While some theories about starch make sense, it's hard to say what's happening on a molecular level, especially for different preparation methods. One claim I see a lot is if you don't rinse off the starch, it blocks evaporation and makes the fries mushy. I tried to track down a reliable source for the claim, but I couldn't find one. I think this might be one of those things that one chef said one time, everyone repeats it, but no one bothered to test if it was actually true. So let's test it. I'll take a potato and cut fries to the same size and weight, give or take a few milligrams, then rinse half of them and not the other half. Fry at the same temperature and time, and then weigh them again. If unrinsed fries had more starch blocking evaporation, then they should be heavier with more water inside. There's some variation between individual fries, but there's no obvious trend. Both batches weigh the same on average. So there goes that theory, unless the rinsed potatoes soaked up more oil to compensate for the lost water. If that's the case, that runs contrary to the idea that rinsing potatoes is supposed to make them less oily. I don't know, this was just one test. But real world tests reveal interesting things. For example, chefs often say that fries absorb more oil when fried at lower temperatures. 
but there are studies that measure the oil absorbed and find that that's not always the case. All of this to say, the science of fried potatoes is ongoing. More research is needed. On that note, what about soaking instead of rinsing? I wager soaking is popular partly for convenience. If you're a restaurant prepping tons of fries in advance, it's a lot easier to let them soak instead of manually rinsing them. But recipes vary widely on how long you're supposed to let them soak. Sometimes they add salt or sugar to the water. So let's see what difference this all actually makes. First up, comparing fries soaked for 30 minutes versus three hours and eight hours. Results were not very insightful. Slight preference for the ones that were soaked less long, but the difference is pretty subtle. And how does a three hour soak compared to a five minute rinse? Again, nothing obvious. They're both about the same interior texture, same level of crispiness. There's not really much difference. Testing additions should be more interesting. Fries soaked with plain water compared to salted water or water with sugar and corn syrup as mentioned in this popular copycat McDonald's recipe. Apparently the sugar adds a bit of sweetness, but also leaves a coating of sugar that helps them get to the desired golden brown color. And indeed the sugar soaked ones did brown faster. I had to pull them out of the oil a minute before the others. How do they taste? The sweetness on these sugar soaked ones, very subtle. The biggest difference I'm noticing is the texture. It's just a bit softer in the inside of the salt soaked ones. I don't know that I would even say that I prefer one over the other. This write-up by Cooks Illustrated explains that soaking helps water work its way in between strands of gelatin starch and makes the fries creamier. And I know salt has effects on brining via osmosis and diffusion. Maybe that explains why the salt soaked ones were creamier. Again, it's hard to say what's actually happening. And it's debatable whether a creamy texture is desirable. Some people prefer their fries to be lighter or fluffier. And this write-up mentions something else I run into a lot with homemade fries. Thick crusts and somewhat dry interiors. They say russet potatoes, even after you rinse or soak them, still have a ton of starch that bursts more in longer cooking times, making a leathery crust. So the thickness of your fries and oil temperature are factors too. Higher temperatures will brown the sugar faster, larger fries will take longer to cook. I've been testing fries cut to 11 millimeters thick, and maybe this is a cop-out, but I'm not gonna test the dozens of other size and soaking combinations. I'll leave that up to you. And even for the experiments I did, I wouldn't say I proved anything definitively because the potato itself is a variable. Potatoes aren't just blobs of white stuff, they're living things. If a potato in the ground hasn't been harvested in the fall season, winter comes around and it gets cold outside and the spud goes into hibernation by converting starch into simpler sugars. So potatoes at a grocery store might have different proportions of starch and sugar, depending on how they've been stored or how you store them after you buy them. Warmer temperatures slow down the sugar conversion and can even reverse it, a reconditioning that helps the sugar convert back into starch, at least according to Dr. Potato, who's not a real doctor, but seems to know what he's talking about. There's also the dry matter percentage to consider. Dry matter being everything in the potato that isn't water. They shouldn't be too dry or too wet. Heston Blumenthal, a super nerdy chef who did lots of research on potatoes, shows a somewhat reliable way to measure dry matter. You make a saline solution, 11.5% salt in water. If the potato neither sinks nor floats, and you've got a dry matter of about 22%, which is perfect for chips. So if I go to a bulk bin at a grocery store and get a bunch of potatoes and drop them into an 11.5% brine, I see that one of them hovers in the middle. Others are either floaters or sinkers. There's a lot of variation in potatoes bought from the same bin at the same store. But does this even matter? Do floater potatoes fry up any differently from the sinkers? And the answer is yes. The floater potatoes browned more quickly and came out more crispy and fluffy inside. The sinkers were tough and leathery, not nearly as good. I can't believe this made that much of a difference. This is more of a difference than any of the rinsing methods. I was so impressed by this that I had to try it again. And sure enough, the same thing happened the second time around. It's hard to get consistent dry matter for any crop of potatoes because it's one of those things where growing and harvesting conditions can make a big difference. This is proof that potatoes are definitely not created equal, and without controlling for that variable, it's hard to know how your french fries will turn out. Going back to Belgian frites, which are often not rinsed, 
This is probably because they use a different variety of potato in Belgium called binchy. I actually happen to have some binchy potatoes because I grew them in my garden last year, and if I compare rinsed versus unrinsed binchy fries, they look more consistent. Not much difference in crispness or color, at least in this test. On the other hand, I found this video showing binchy potatoes being cut and processed, and you can see that they are being rinsed, but some shops cut their potatoes fresh on site and don't rinse. Not to mention all the other ways in which french fry recipes can vary. You might do a triple cook process where you blanch the fries before frying them, cut them to different sizes, add coatings, and use different frying fats and temperatures. As with most food, there's not just one recipe that works for everyone. But to wrap this all up, the practical takeaway is rinsing should help your fries stick less and brown less quickly, or letting them soak is easier for bigger batches. It's that simple. I know I did a lot of work to come to such a simple conclusion, but the other takeaway is potatoes are tricky, and I really admire chefs like Heston Blumenthal, who lives with a motto of question everything. So much advice, in cooking especially, is taken at face value and never challenged. Examining a simple claim like rinsing fries is important led me down a rabbit hole and made it clear to me that it's really hard to know everything about potatoes. While rinsing does seem to help, it may or may not make a big difference when you consider all of the variables. Julia Child said it best. I've done quite a bit of research on how to do them and nobody agrees on anything. And I don't know what I agree on myself because potatoes are very strange animals. Very strange animals indeed.